classical mechanics, non-inertial ref reference frames. I did previously I did a problem, and I'll, I'll put my link to my playlist down below, and so you can look at all these videos. But I did a video uh, for an object falling from a tower near Earth and including the Coriolis force. And I said, well, you know, it'd be kind of cool for something that was rotating faster, uh, where things you had to take into account both the centrifugal force, the Coriolis force, and gravity. And so I have an example for you. So this, imagine that we have the asteroid Eros, which actually has some interesting properties. It's, it's 16 kilometers in diameter or something like that, and it rotates every five hours. So it has a higher rotation rate and a lower gravitational field so that, you know, we can actually kick a ball. You could imagine standing on the surface of this and kicking a ball and then modeling the motion of it. And so I'm going to model that motion two ways. The first way is in the frame of the rotating uh, asteroid. In that case, I will have the net force as the gravitational force, Fg, plus the centrifugal force, Fcen, plus the Coriolis force, F core. Okay, so we have to, let's just really quickly define all these. So imagine I have a ball, uh, actually there's my ball right there. So I have some vector r, I have an angular velocity omega, and has some velocity v. So the gravitational force is our normal gravitational force, negative g, mass of Eros, mass m, divided by the magnitude of r squared, and then of course I need to make that a vector, so I'm going to have to have r hat. That's my gravitational force, normal gravitational force, but now we, we can't just use mg, obviously, because it could move further away. Uh, the centrifugal force, we're going to write as this, f centrifugal, at c n n, it's going to be equal to uh, the mass times omega cross r cross omega. And so this is the same thing as you think about the centrifugal accelerations, uh, m r omega squared is the same thing, but this gives us a vector, right? This takes into account the position of it and the angular velocity as a vector. So it, yeah, we have to do cross products, but Python's going to do it for us, so it's not a big deal. And then the Coriolis force f core is going to be equal to negative 2 m omega cross v. So these three forces change with position and velocity, so I have to do a numerical calculation. And of course, the numerical calculation, we're going to break it into small time steps. I'm going to break this into time steps of one second, and then during each of those time intervals, we can assume the force is constant. So we can update, I'm going to update the momentum. So we can say P2 equals P1 plus F net, net, delta T, and then we can update the position. R2 is R1 plus, we're, we just updated that, so we call it P2, delta T over the mass. And then we'll update time, and so we'll do that again and again and again. And so that's the first thing I'm going to do. And then after that, then we're going to go to a non-rotating frame and rotate the planet and see if we get the same thing. And hopefully it's going to be awesome. But it might not be because I'm going to do this and I'm going to make mistakes. But let's just jump into Python. Now, I already picked out some parameters. I typed in my parameters in Python so that I didn't want to have to look those things up. I don't know what the mass of this planet, this thing is. I don't know. Okay, so I looked it up beforehand. So here we are. I looked it up. Hope you're not disappointed. But the rest of the stuff I'm going to build live. So here I have the gravitational constant G, the radius of arrows. It was, I looked up the, it was, it's not a sphere. Okay, but uh, the mass, and I, the, the period is 5.27, but who knows, that's fine, 5. And then oh, lowercase w is my angular velocity value, and then capital W is capital omega. Because I'm not typing out omega. What do you think I am? You think I got all day? I don't have all day. Okay, so let's make Eros. Eros is a sphere. Its position is the origin. And I'm going to show you a couple tricks. 0, 0, 0. Uh, radius is RE. And then I'm going to give it a texture, because when I rotate, I want to be able to rotate it. So I'm going to do a trick here. Texture equals textures dot stucco. And let's just run that, and I'll show you what it looks like. So there's some built-in textures in Webby Python. I've shown you the Earth before, but look at that. See? Isn't that nice? OK, and let's do this, too. Uh, this will help out. Shininess 
equals zero, so it's not shiny. There. I mean, it's stucco, but it looks like a moon. Good enough for me. You know, and there are other ways you could show it rotating, but if you just have a plain solid sphere that's the default white color, it, it doesn't rotate. I mean, you can't see that it rotates, so we want to rotate it. Okay, now let's make a ball. Now, I already calculated the escape velocity for this, and I got, actually, I think it's around 7. I'm not really sure. So, but I don't want to, if I, if I started with an initial velocity too high, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be gone. And I want to actually pretend like I'm kicking a ball and it comes back and I want to know where it lands. That's what I want to do. Okay, so let's make a ball. Its position is going to be, I'm going to put it on the negative side, the negative x side of the, the, the planet. No, it's a sphere. Position equals vector negative re, zero, zero. Uh, and its radius is going to be equal to, what did I do before? I want to make something that's, uh, visible. I put an RE over 20. Because I, you know, I don't want to have a real ball, right? You won't be able to see it. Color equals color dot yellow. And of course, I need to put a make trail equals true. So if you're not familiar with WebE Python, we have all these parameters uh, for the different three dimensional objects. And, and so it, radius, color, make trail, texture, all that stuff. So make trail makes it leave a trail, so that's going to be really useful. Uh, now, I need the mass to, I'm just going to call this M. I'm not going to make it a property of the object, and it's just a one kilogram ball. It doesn't really matter. It's all going to cancel. You know the mass cancels. Uh, now, I need the initial velocity. So let's give the ball a velocity, a momentum. Uh, M times vector. What did I use before? I, want, I, I did three. So let's say negative three, I want it moving away from the planet. So negative three, and then three in the up direction, and then three in the z direction, which is towards you. Just, just, to, just to shake it up a little bit. You can change these up if you want to. Now I need the time of zero, and a time step of, I picked one, right? Because you know this is gonna take some significant amount of time to move through there. So I don't need a super, super, super time and small time interval. A time interval one, the forces are not going to be changing that much because the ball is not going to be moving that much. I think that's okay. You can always change that and fix that later. Okay, we are ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to say while t is less than a thousand uh, and then rate of 1000. Actually, am I going to do that? What did I do before? Rate 1,000, yeah, so let's do uh, while t is less than 5,000. So that will run for some amount of time. And I always like to start off with a time loop because I know time's gonna get to 5,000. If I, if I choose something else like while the ball is greater than, than the, the radius of the, earth, the planet, it may never get back down there, it may never stop. So I like this because I know it's gonna stop. And then I can change it later. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to calculate r. I don't really have to do this. Uh, ball.pos minus arrows.pos. So this is the vector from the center of arrows to the ball. And, and I like to do that because if I ever move the planet or put it somewhere else, uh, this will still work. I don't want to just assume that the planet's the origin. You don't have to do that though. But I do, and then I have R. I don't have to worry about other things. Uh, so let's go ahead and calculate the net force. I'm just going to call it F. It's going to be the gravitational force, negative G times ME times M times norm r divided by mag r squared. So norm r is a unit vector r hat, and then mag returns the magnitude of that vector. Uh, now I need to do the centrifugal force. Let's do that one next. So it's going to be plus m times cross, yes, cross, cross, omega r omega. So I have a, cro a double cross product there that you can't even see because my big old dumb head's in the way. Uh, and so this is going to be omega, cro uh, cr omega cross r, all of that cross omega, which is exactly the equation I have there. And then finally, I have negative 2 times m times cross omega v, which is ball dot p divided by the mass. But I put the mass out here so I can just divide. I can just bring this in. I can factor that out like that. Right, ball dot p, yeah, then my mass is still there. The mass is a scalar, so you could you could commute it into the thing. Okay, so now I have my force. Now I can update my momentum. Ball dot p, ball dot p, 
plus F times DT. I can update my position, ball.pos, ball.pos plus ball.p times DT divided by M. And then I can update time, T equals T plus DT. Let's run the sucker. I didn't even save it. I should save it. Let's save it. Uh, Eros Coriolis. I can't, I can't see. Oh, I did. Almost got it. Okay. I'm ready for the run. Oh, doing something. And you'll notice, okay, does it, it does, you can see it's curving, right? It's not just a straight plain line. It's not just a, a parabolic thing. There is some other forces at play here. So I think our, I, I think the thing is working. Uh, and it went inside the planet because it didn't know any better. So we can fix that. So let's run this while mag ball.pos is greater than or equal to re. It starts at re, so if I don't do that, if I don't include the equal to, it's, it's never going to it's never going to go anywhere. I could increase the rate because I'm already getting bored, but there we go. Okay, now what I want to do is to model the same thing, but with the rotating um, rotating. Uh, asteroid. Okay, so let's do this. Down here, I'm going to reset time. Time equals zero. And I'm going to make a second ball. Ball two, I'm going to put it in the same spot. So I can even copy this. Oops. And it's going to have the same mass. Everything's the same. Actually, yeah. So let's just put that there. But I'm going to call that ball two. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to make it magenta just so we can tell it apart. Magenta. I don't know why I always misspell that, but I misspell that a lot, and you can't even see it again in my big head. Okay, uh, so I need to give it a velocity. Now, um, I'm just gonna tell you right now, let's go ahead and make its momentum. Ball two dot P equals, I want the same thing as before, right? So this up here. Um, but, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna copy that, so it's going to be m times this. And then I have to add in the velocity of the object because of the rotation, right? Because now I'm in the frame outside of that. It's already moving because of the rotation, and I have to include that. So we can, if you know the angular velocity vector, you know the position vector, then you can use the cross product to get the velocity. So it's going to, I'm just going to add this plus cross uh, omega ball ball 2 dot pos. So that's going to take the cross product omega cross r and it's going to add it to that velocity and then multiply the mass so it's going to have a different momentum. Okay. Now let's just go ahead and just calculate the motion and then we can rotate the planet and make sure things are working. Uh, so again I'm going to I'm going to start off with while t less than 5000 uh, rate 100 no 1000. Uh, R2 is ball2.pos minus arrows.pos. Again, I just want to be good. I want to be a good person. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and calculate the force. Now here, F is negative G times ME, not MME, times ME times M times uh, norm R2 divided by mag, mag R2 squared, and that's it. Right? There, are no, there is no centrifugal force. There is no Coriolis force. I'm in the inertial frame now, so that's the only force on it. And now I can update the momentum. Ball 2 dot P, oops, equals ball 2 dot P plus F times DT. And I did reuse that variable F. It's fine. Uh, and then I'm going to update the position. Ball 2 dot POS, ball 2 dot POS plus ball 2 dot P times DT divided by M. Update time. T equals T plus DT. Let's run it. Now, so it's going to do two. It's doing two calculations, right? And, and it's going to use the same uh, 3D set. So here's that first one with the fake forces. Boom. And then here's my other one. And so it's going to land in a different place because they're not the same frames. Oh, I, I didn't stop it. Okay, I got to stop it. So down here, let's run this. Um, for the same kind of thing, while mag 
ball2.pos is greater than or equal to RE. Okay, so there's that first one again. And then here goes my second one. So now what I need to do is to rotate, I'm going to rotate the asteroid and I'm going to rotate that first ball. So I'm going to rotate them together. And so we can see if they land at the same spot, right? It would be kind of cool. And it, it looks cool already. So, okay, so all we need to do is to rotate those things. So I can do that down here in my second loop. What I'm going to do, other than just moving the ball, I'm also going to rotate arrows. So we can do that with the rotate function arrows.rotate, you give it the origin. I'm going to rotate about its origin. Origin equals vector 0, 0, 0. I need to give it an axis about what to rotate. I'm going to rotate about the y-axis. So axis equals vector uh, 0, 1, 0. And, and it, the magnitude doesn't matter. Just use the direction there. And then I need to give it an angle. So I'm going to rotate it uh, um, omega dt each, each time interval, right? So the angle it's going to be omega times dt, the scalar, not the vector. Now, I'm going to copy this. Because I want to rotate, I'm going to copy this. I need to rotate ball 1, too, because I want to move it. So ball dot rotate, the same thing. I'm going to rotate the same way, about the same origin, about the same uh, angle, and everything. So let's see if this works. Okay, same again. There's our first inertial frame. Boom. And then here we go. See, now it's rotating. Isn't that cool? And look, is it going to land in the same spot? Boom! It worked. Boom. Okay. That's pretty good. That's, that's amazing. Look at that. That's just plain art. That's not just physics. That's art. I love it. Now, the only thing I would have loved to do, and I tried to do this one time before, is I would love to, like, rotate this whole curve, this part with it, too. But that part over there is fine. Um, so I think, I think overall, pretty good job. Good job. Everyone give yourself a double high five. Okay, link to that code down below. Link to my other videos uh, in this playlist for classical mechanics are down below, too. Hope you enjoyed that. I'll talk to you later.